What's good? What's poppin'? YouTube, it's your boy. Who's man? You already know what time it is. About to get into this air raid. Got some more plays for y'all. This is Y Cross. Y Cross is such a dope play to mix in um, with a lot of these air raid plays. So if you are new, hit the subscribe button because, like I said, I go through all the air raid plays um, or air raid plays. I think are really good. So I'm going over all the plays. Then I'll also kind of go over strategy and then I'll start playing games again. Part of that little break from games is Madden just, I'm more of a sim guy. We do not care. But these still work against, I mean, against regular people. Um, you know, I've played pl plenty of games against regular people and I feel like they've worked. So, um, but yeah, anyway, um, we've had to get into it. So like I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. Hit the thumbs up, hit the like, do all that good stuff. I'll see y'all in there. All right, so the air raid. Um, we're going over White Cross, like I said. White Cross is in a few different formations. Uh, right now, we're in the pistol spread uh, formation. Uh, this is nice because it just automatically has four receivers um, in the set. Um, but Let's come out in this and then i'll show you it in several other formations because there's different like variations of it but um we'll just go against nickel and then random play i feel like white cross is really easy to read um i don't use this play a lot mainly because i feel like it, it is pretty easy to stop in my opinion um however if your opponent is one of those cover zero blitz kind of guys this is a really good play to use especially if you have good uh route runners on the field um or just somebody who's really fast in the slot where McKenzie is. So, um, first we're gonna go over the, the read progressions and um, uh, you know end it off. So basically, you're gonna read this left to right. So you're gonna read the streak, you're gonna read the out route, the crossing route by McKenzie, and then that route by Sanders. Um, and um, usually, single high. Once again, it's either gonna be cover one or um, cover three. If it's cover three, you'll notice like immediately, um, you should at least notice immediately. Um, and actually I'll just run it here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So he steps outside, I look there, boom. Now, what I was looking for is right here. So right here, you see this um, flat zone here going to take the outside and once that happens i know this is cover three just from how he angles in i know if they angle in towards the qb it's going to be zone so he angles in and he's chucking back so boom the streak is you know taken this out route's taken and i know that these two uh hook zones here are going to be taking this um crosser so you know as soon as i make that determined like as soon as i see that over there I'm looking directly over here to my crosser. The crosser's taken. But one nice thing about this is if that tackle didn't get blown up immediately, um, <laughs> the tackle doesn't get blown up immediately. I tried to throw it right there, as you see. Boom. You pr I probably should have thrown this a little bit earlier, but you throw this in, boom. It stops in a nice part of that zone if you throw it earlier obviously you have a lot more space because um, you have this guy following and then the other flat zone is coming down to take the running back obviously this man uh, is gonna be in a third so he's gonna you know kind of stay further downfield uh, against too high man really um, <laughs> You know, if you have a guy uh, like Diggs, he has a speed, route running, and release advantage. And then you have Beasley. You just kind of, I'm going to look at him first. But that safety there looked a little bit scary. I could have probably fit that in. And I'll show you what I was looking at. So if I think it's cover two man, boom, he has the, the advantage. Now, I possibly could have fit it in. Um, I could have probably possibly thrown a touch pass and aimed it at the sideline and I might have been able to get it over there But I couldn't Beasley's getting taken really nicely over them um, to the sideline and Right here, you know if they're 
if they don't have all DBs on the field, you know you have a mismatch with a linebacker on a receiver. So sometimes you just have to look at your mismatches. Boom. I have a mismatch. I throw it to him. Pick up some yards. I'm going to run it again. I look. It looks like cover three. And man, he's getting blown up. So once again, I'll show you guys this again. I'll look over. I see that number one corner faces towards me. I know it's zone at that point. The flat zone is already playing outside coverage on this out route. So I'm not even going to try it. I'm not looking at it. So now at this point, <clears throat> looking across the field, this looks like it could be some kind of like cover three match. Yeah, it looks like it's a cover three match. Just how uh, players are you know, reacting. But I still would much rather take this route here because, you know, I throw it. If you throw it with anticipation, throw it a little early. Boom. He's too far away. He's not catching that. I'm just not throwing it soon enough. So once again, I look over to the side. All right. So <clears throat> in this case, if your opponent's coming out and you think there's a cover doing a cover zero blitz, um, usually I'll just block my running back or you can keep him out on that route. But I like to block him for a little extra protection. You know, I'll slide um, and then uh, boom. Now that one you got to be a little bit uh, careful of because obviously they're going to be looking towards something like that. But, um, you know, you just take what the defense gives you in that case. So, boom. I see that. And that was just a bad throw. But you can low ball. You can low ball this. Um, the reason I did throw this is because I know that this guy here was running towards the running back. You low ball this. You know, he's sitting in front boom or another thing is if this guy is the user and he decides to take the running back you know just take your crosser across the middle so once again I'll show you guys what this looks like boom I throw it behind just to make sure he doesn't get over there now obviously if um, that is the user most likely you're gonna be sprinting over there anyway um, with the running back um, not going out um, so you have to be careful you may have to throw it a little quick so boom once again they threw a blitz the middle of the field's wide open I'm gonna hit um, the crosser so it looks like they're bringing the heat again I'll show you what it looks like boom so if you send the running back out and they're not using the um, middle linebacker say they're using the D line something like that that is a benefit of that um, this one is not gonna be too long because I mean I feel like this play is pretty simple as far as um, the reads and things but this isn't a play I use a lot this is more so if my opponent likes to run cover three a lot or if they like running those zone blitzes or man or if I just know I have a straight-up mismatch on the uh slot guys so so like i said if y'all see this play over here um that's y cross um there are different variations of it in different formations and each one does a you know something different um and i will put you know a little clip of that in there as i'm speaking right now but you know this is something you definitely want to just sprinkle in every so often like i said if you notice your opponent likes to run cover three blitzes or things like that um, definitely sprinkle this in it throws them off um, it's kind of hard to guard everything um, and it's very easy to read like I said it's left to right you read the streak the out the crosser the um, that little hitch and then after that is the um, swing route by the running back and as long as you know you know if they're coming out single high double high or like a zero look um, then you should know kind of your your quick reads on that one and this is not a i'm gonna stare at the crosser out the entire time because if you do that 
you're gonna miss you're gonna miss an open you know an open receiver um i'll always preach reads it just makes it way easier to um, throw to an open receiver especially if your opponent's coming out on some crazy whatever stuff they be doing now where they only rushing two rushing one not rushing people at all you do this it makes it easier because then if you go through your read progressions and they're not sending anybody and nobody's open i'm just running the ball I'm going to just take the quarterback and run if I have a mobile quarterback, which in this system, you kind of want to have a decent, decently athletic uh, quarterback. They don't need to be anything crazy, but you, just as long as they're decently athletic, strong arm, um, those are some good things to, to have at quarterback. So, um, but yeah. Um, you know, if, if you don't see anybody open, don't force it. Either try to, you know, scramble and get some yards. Um, scrambling also can, you know, get people open um, or just throw the ball away and uh, play for another down. But anyway, that's going to be it for this game or this uh, play in, in the air raid um, offense that I'm running. Um, I do have a um, playlist uh, going with all the plays I have in it. Next, we're going to go over curls combo. That one's pretty boring. We have smash. And then those are going to be all of the drop back passes. So I've already done shallow cross, mesh, post curl, wheel, Y sail. I'm doing Y cross right now. And then we have two more on the drop backs. And then we're going to do um, the quick passes. The quick passes I have are going to be four verts, Y corner, um, outside hitch, uh, fade speed out, and Y stick. That's going to be the next like phase of this. And then. I'm probably going to split it into two different videos. I'll go over the run game and then the screens. Um, and then I'll probably just have like a little trick play thing because there are some pretty cool plays in, you know, this Arizona playbook. Um, and I'm trying to think what else should I do? I should I should also go over personnel, um, what I think makes a good air raid team. Um, after all that, I will go into how to scheme um, what to look for and why maybe I call certain plays or maybe, you know, why I go with certain formations with certain teams, because I think, um, there's a lot of times where I watch stuff and I notice like people have trouble using Travis Kelsey and they're trying to run the ball a lot. And it's like, you got to use Travis Kelsey, how, you know, what Travis Kelsey is best at, or, um, <clears throat> for instance, if you have um, a, a really good blocking tight end and you also have a good receiving tight end, but the blocking tight end is better or maybe faster, use the slower, better receiving tight end. They're going to do better in receiving situations. Um, same with you know running backs. Just because you have a faster running back doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be better in the past game because I've messed around with that before, you know, and I'm like, cool, if I have this really fast running back, and I try to throw it to him all the time. You know, if he gets hit in these these crazy situations, or he doesn't get you know the best separation, that could be you know the game right there. So um, I'll go over personnel and what it means, and you know different things like that. Um, and yeah, the, so that should be the schedule going forward for the air raid. And then I'll get into some of the games, and I may d dabble in the like the defense I'm using and why i'm using it why i like it but um yeah that's gonna be it for this video uh like i said earlier hit the subscribe button hit the bell hit the like doing that good stuff thank god for coming through and watching i'll see y'all next time peace